The Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Did you serve Kraft's parquet margarine at your house today? I hope you did, because parquet is the margarine that looks wonderful, tastes wonderful, and spreads smoothly even when ice cold. And now there's still another reason for serving parquet every day. With every pound you buy, you can order a pair of Powers model nylon stockings at half price. I'll be back in just a few minutes to tell you more about this sensational offer by Parquet Margarine. comes a time in the life of every man Leroy's age when he begins to chafe at parental authority. This occasionally presents quite a problem for the great Gildersleeve, who, like most parents, spends a great deal of time discussing teenagers. But do they know how much time teenagers spend discussing parents? Gosh, Babs, I don't know if Uncle let me go to that dance. It's way across town. Leroy, it isn't as if we were going on a bus or something. After all, we'll be in Dinky's car. Uncle would rather I go on the bus. A car has to have fenders before he thinks it's safe. Leroy, your uncle is positively from the Stone Age. Yeah, but try to tell him that. Well, I'm going to tell Mother I'm going, and that'll be that. You are? And if you can't go, I'll just go with somebody else. Gosh. It's going to be a real green affair. Yeah, I know. Dark green. Gosh, I wish I could make it. Tell your uncle all the crowd's going. Freddie's giving the party so we know his parents approve. And Sheila goes steady with Freddie. She'll be there because her mother never refuses her. How does that help me? Well, if you tell your uncle Sheila's mother and my mother are letting us go, what can he say if he doesn't want to be a king-size square? Yeah, that'll put the pressure on Uncle, all right. Parents are like dominoes. If you push one... They'll all go. Okay, I'll give Uncle a push. <laughs> I don't know why they worry about us anyway. I guess they're too old to worry about themselves. <laughs> Honestly, Mother comes up with some of the most archaic ideas. You'd think a girl of 14 doesn't know her own mind. Yeah. Leroy, I'll tell you something confidentially. Yeah? My mother has three gray hairs. She has. When did she get them? When I turned 14. <laughs> Just shows how grown up we're getting. I have a mother with gray hair. I wonder if Unc put something on his. <laughs> He's getting pretty old. He probably isn't gray because he doesn't worry. He still considers you a baby, Leroy. Who's a baby? Well, you always run to him to make your decisions for you. I do not always run to Unc. Sometimes I don't even do what he says. If he isn't looking. <laughs> Mothers become so impossible, especially when it comes to boys, just like a mother hen. Well, we're too old for that stuff. I'll just tell Unc I'm going to the party because all the kids are going. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Hi, Unc. Well, hello, Leroy. Babs? Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Babs, I just saw your mother across the street. She said it's time to come home. I'll go in a minute. I want to tell her about some plans I've made anyway. Fine. You want to talk to your uncle about something, don't you, Leroy? Well, yeah. Uh, what's on your mind, my boy? Well, uh, I want to talk to you about something. Well, I know that. What is it? Well, Babs and I want to go to a dance at Freddy's house on Friday night. You're Friday night, huh? Well, I don't see why you shouldn't. Great, huh? I see no reason why I can't drive you over. Oh, but we want to go in Dinky's car. Is Dinky's car the one with the red lantern in the back for a taillight? Yeah. It's real nervous. Well, it sure made me nervous. <laughs> First time I saw it parked out front, I thought they were tearing up the street. Can we go with Dink? He's taking a girl. Now, Leroy, you know I don't approve of you driving around nights in cars with the kids. Who's a kid? I suppose.
suppose I'll have to go with somebody who isn't considered a child. Who's a child? No, children. Children. Oh, for corn's sake, huh? <laughs> well, you're not exactly children, but you still need a guiding hand. I want to go to the party with the other kids. That's all there is to it. Leroy, you don't argue with your uncle. Gosh, I never get to make any decisions for myself. Yes, you do. As long as I approve them. <laughs> oh, sure. And I'm not objecting to the party. But I feel I should drive you there and pick you up. We want to go in Dink's car. Not with a mother hen. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Excuse me. Babs, your mother wants you. breakfast and left. Yeah? Yes, sir. He ate and went. Yeah, that boy. He knows I've always insisted that we have breakfast together. Yes, sir, but he ate and went. Coffee now, Miss Gilsey? Yeah, thank you. He take his calcium pill before he left? He took something. Now, Bertie. I know he took something. Who did he take his pill? He took something. Bertie. Because I don't know if it was a prune or a pill. Oh. I see prune pit, but I don't see no pill, so I guess he took the pill. <laughs> No, no, he didn't. I see it hiding under his plate. Yes. How many times do I have to tell Leroy to take his calcium? You hop on his plenty. Well, he's a growing boy. He needs calcium. Yes, sir. And so I can't tell him a thing. No, sir. He's smarter than I am. Yes, sir. I mean, no, <laughs> He no longer respects my wishes. Oh, yes, he does, Miss Gilsey. No, he doesn't. Should have heard him argue with me about going to that dance in Dinky's car. Oh, well, that was because his little girlfriend Dad was standing there. Leroy wanted to appear big. Well, he better not get too big for his britches. No, sir. You know what he called me, Bertie? No, sir. He called me a mother hen. Yes, sir. And that isn't funny. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeve? I'll be with you in just a minute. Why do you have the shades pulled this morning? I'm dressing the window. I always pull the shades when I dress the window. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I don't like to have customers staring at me. Yeah, I see. I was in the window one day, and a man came in and said, How much is that scarecrow in the window? <laughs> No, Peavy. Of course he was only joking. At least he thought it was a joke. Will you hand me that display card there, Mr. Gildersleeve? Is the card with the ant powder on it or the one with the pretty girl? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah, here's the girl, Peavy. If you're going to dress the window, let's dress it. That's what I say. Peavy, you haven't changed your window display since last Christmas, have you? Well, the pharmacy doesn't have to change displays like most stores. The styles don't change much. Hot water bottles, the same design it was 20 years ago. A bottle of castor oil looks just as unpleasant as it did when I was a boy. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah, how does that look, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, fine, but you've left your feather duster in the window. No, I didn't. That's for sale. A genuine turkey tail, my Thanksgiving special. Me. Care to buy one, Mr. Gildersleeve? Peavy, the turkey feathers I buy will have meat on the other end. <laughs> Now, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I have to pack some ice cream for Mrs. Johnson's party. Was that Freddie Johnson's party? Yes, but I don't think you can go. It's for the kids. <laughs> I know. I'm having a little trouble with Leroy about that party. You don't think? Yeah. I've always driven Leroy to these affairs. But now, all of a sudden, he wants to go in a jalopy with Dinky Muckleroy behind the wheel. Well, the young folks like to be together. They feel a little cramped with us holsters around. Well, that's no reason why you shouldn't take my advice. By the time they get Leroy's age, they like to try their own wings. I, I know I did. You know? What'd your father do? He clipped mine. <laughs> <laughs> he did? Yeah, I'm here to tell you, he had me towing the mark until I was 25. 25? And then Mrs. TV took over. <laughs> Well, I don't want to take any privileges from Leroy that he's entitled to. 
All I want to do is the right thing by him. I just wonder what's come over the boy. Well, if you're concerned, why don't you talk to his teacher? See if he's any different from the rest of them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I tell you, I'm going to call the plays a few more years as far as Leroy's concerned. Well, no matter what plays you call, I imagine Leroy will make a lot of passes. <laughs> Why, George, I'll intercept them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say that. Well, I thought I might as well kill two birds with one shot tonight. I'm going to talk to Grace about Leroy. Why not make it a regular date and talk about me, too? Yeah, she seemed a little upset with me on the phone because I haven't called her in quite a while. Oh, Hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Grace. Come in. I haven't seen you in some time. Well, you know how it is with the water commissioner. You're always up to my neck. <laughs> that makes you just about all wet, doesn't it? <laughs> well, Grace, I came over to talk to you seriously. Oh? About Leroy. Oh, then you didn't just come to talk about me. Oh, yes. After we talk about Leroy, we'll talk about us. <laughs> Throckmorton, in this age of subtleties, you're very refreshing. <laughs> Sit down. Yeah, thank you. Well, I had no idea I was putting on my best perfume to discuss student problems. Well, it'll hold through Leroy. <sighs> What's happened to Leroy? Yeah, that's what I wonder. Have you noticed any change in the boy? Well, he doesn't stare out the window so much. He doesn't? He stares at the girls. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I realize they're in the picture now. In fact, he considers himself quite a man. <laughs> Excuse me. He's taken to arguing points with his old uncle instead of accepting my word. Oh. Yeah, ordinarily, I'd put my foot down. Uh -huh. But they say that isn't the way to handle kids anymore. Well, I don't think you're as concerned about Leroy as you are about losing your authority in the home. No, wait a minute. We're criticizing Leroy, not me. Well, I don't believe Leroy's any different from other boys and girls his age. No fooling? No, it's just a phase in which they all feel their urge to rebel against certain parental restrictions, uh, however justified. Well, I know that. I just said it a little differently. <laughs> How did you say it again? <laughs> Throughout, Morton, what you need to do is regain your authority. You? Yes, make Leroy think you're infallible now, whether you are or not. Yeah, I see. Of course, you have to be tactful. Well, if I'm anything, I'm tactful. <laughs> I'll get busy with the boy. You know, Grace... Let's talk about us. Uh, yes? You were a little cool to me when I came in. So I'd like to tactfully invite you to sit close to me. Why should I? Well, your perfume is beginning to wear off. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> well, then, I'll fix it so you can be as close to my perfume as you like. Really? Yeah. Oh, boy, I've got her now. I'll get the bottle, and you can take it home with you. Hmm. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. If you could get beautiful nylon stockings at half price, wouldn't you jump at the chance? That's exactly the bargain offered at any store that sells Kraft's Parquet Margarine. In every package of Kraft's Parquet, you'll find instructions on how to order famous Powers Model Nylons for only 75 cents a pair, just half the price you'd ordinarily pay. These luxurious first-quality nylons were styled by John Robert Powers to flatter the legs of America's most glamorous cover girls. They're both sheer and long-wearing, 51-gauge, 15 denier. A tapered heel slenderizes your ankle, and a special flexible top assures a perfect fit. When a nationally known laboratory tested these Powers Model nylons, they reported their quality and durability the equal of nylon selling at $1.50. But you can order them at half price, as many as you want for only 75 cents a pair, plus the yellow side panel from a package of parquet margarine. You can select either a dark seam or a self-color seam. And there's a choice of two of the season's smartest shades. Just send in 75 cents for each pair and the little yellow flap that tucks into the top of the package. Be sure to pick up Kraft's Parquet tomorrow, the delicious one that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Complete instructions for ordering your nylons are given inside every package of Parquet Margarine. <laughs> Well, 
like many parents with teenagers in the house, the great Gildersleeve feels that he's losing his authority with Leroy. It looks like his young nephew is about to go to a dance without his permission. So the water commissioner is setting out in characteristic fashion to prove to his nephew that his advice should be taken. My relationship with Leroy is at the crossroads, Bertie. Yes, sir. Of course, I could just forbid him to go, but he just resent me. And there comes a time when a parent has to be clever and tactful. Yes, sir. You got a real problem. Oh, not really, Bertie. Leroy will fall in line when he sees how other people respect my opinions. Yes, sir. Who you got in mind? Well, this sort of thing has to begin at home, Bertie. Yes, sir. I know you seldom disagree with me. No, sir. That ain't what I get paid for doing. (laughs) (laughs) What I mean is, in the presence of Leroy, you might go out of your way to ask my advice about things. And then take it, of course. Are you with me? I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> you might make it a point, Bertie, to ask my opinion about everything and accept my word as law. Yes. Yeah, that'll impress the boy. Okay, from now on around this house, you the ball. Here comes Leroy. And here I go after that Academy Award. Hi, I'm Bertie. Hello, my boy. Hello, Leroy. How was school today? Horrible. They give me a lot of homework. Where are the comics? Well, I was getting ready to read the paper. If perhaps you have homework to do, you'd better get at that. I'll get it done. Can I have the comics on? Uh, well, there's no time like the present. Oh, that ancient history can wait a few more centuries. <laughs> he pays no attention to me. Ah, thanks for the comics. Yes, yes. Um, Bertie, is there something you want to ask me? Me? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, what is your opinion about the weather? <laughs> the weather? Oh, I know you got a good opinion about everything. And I was thinking about washing tomorrow, so I want to low down on the weather. It looks a little cloudy. Well, if it's rain you're worried about, it won't rain. Thank you, sir. The paper says rain. <laughs> well, they miss. Leroy, if your uncle says it ain't gonna rain, it wouldn't there. We'll know tomorrow. I'll bet you're wrong, Unc. Yes, yes. Everybody's got a lot of respect for what your uncle says, Leroy, and that goes for the rain. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. <laughs> yes, but there's hardly anybody comes to the door that don't want me to get Mr. Gilsey's advice about something. What are we gonna eat, Bertie? Uh, Leroy, listen to what Bertie say. Okay. Who comes by for advice? Well, let me see now. You take the milkman. He asked me something to ask Miss Gilsey this morning. Now, what was it? Well, if you can't think of it right now, I'll make a point to see him when he comes tomorrow. (laughs) I can give him a couple of minutes of my time. Oh, he'll appreciate that because he respects your judgment. Good. Anything else, Bertie? Well, let's see. Oh, the mailman's got some important questions he wants to ask you, too. Now, there's a man who's got great respect for your judgment. Well, when you have a reputation for being right, it gets around. Yes, sir, and you got a reputation for being right. Uh, anything else, Bertie? Well, oh, I clean forgot about my sister. Your sister? Now, there's a girl who hangs on your every word. Well, that's nice. Uh, what's her problem? Well... Oh, she said to ask you, Mr. Gilfleet, if she should get married now or wait later. Well, in my opinion, there'll be a better time. Then she'll wait. She has to. She ain't got no boyfriend anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Any more questions? I've got a question, Unc. Well, what is it, my boy? When do we eat? Oh, (laughs) The boy just doesn't pay any attention to me. Bertie and I went to a lot of trouble to impress him, and what does he say? Yeah, what did he say? When do we eat? <laughs> well, if it was dinner time, that sounds like a pretty good question. <laughs> TV, be serious. Now, I feel a showdown coming with Leroy. What if he defies me and goes to that dance in Dickie's car anyway? Well, I think he'd have a good time, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but then I've completely lost control. My authority's completely gone. And I came in here to ask you to help me get it back. Oh, I'd be glad to do that. Good. What do you want me to do? Well, when Leroy sees how much influence I have with adults, he'll respect my judgment. And you expect to influence me? That's the gist of it, Peavy. When Leroy meets me here, 
Let's make him feel that you practically depend on me to run the store. Mr. Gildersleeve, even Mrs. Peavy doesn't tell me how to run my store. Now, look, Peavy, this whole thing is your idea. My idea? You suggested I go to Leroy's teacher, and she told me what to do. Then you start fiddling with my store, and I'll tell you what to do. (laughs) Peavy, we're just pretending. I'm not pretending. I don't want to tell you how to operate your store. Well, don't. Please, Peavy. Here comes Leroy. Now, ask me something. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Leroy. Hello, Leroy. It's raining out, Aunt. I know. Why did you want me to meet you here? Well, I thought we might ride home together after I help Peavy with his problem. Yeah? Proceed, Peavy. What were you about to say? Well, I won't tell you what I was about to say. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, about the only real problem I have here in the pharmacy is this crossword puzzle. (laughs) Well, that's not exactly what I expected, but uh, go ahead. (laughs) What's puzzling you? What's a four-letter word for egg-shaped? Four letters, huh? Well, I guess it wouldn't be uh, eggs. Mm, I doubt it. That's easy. It's oval. <laughs> Very good, Leroy. I thought you wanted me to help you with an important decision, Phoebe. Come on, Leroy. Let's get out of here. Uh, do you mind if Leroy stays and helps me with the puzzle? <laughs> Darn rain. Even it double-crossed me. Has Leroy said anything about going to that dance tonight in Dinky's car? No, not a word, Bertie. Clammed up, did he? Yeah. He's probably waiting until Dinky drives up tonight in his car, and then he'll make his move. Yes, sir. Kids always figure it's harder to keep them home when somebody's waiting for them out front. Yes, sir. Well, I have one last chance, Bertie. I'm grabbing at a straw. What's that, Miss Gilsey? Marvin. Little Marvin? He's the hardest kid in the neighborhood to control. So when he comes to me for advice... It'll make Leroy sit up and take notice. That'll make everybody sit up and take notice. Is he coming? No, well, he'll be here, Bertie. And he's thoroughly coached. Yes, sir. But well, that must be him. Marvin keeps on ringing the bell till somebody comes. Hi, Bertie. Come in, Marvin. I'm in. <laughs> Where's the big cheese? Mr. Gilfleet? He's the biggest cheese around here, isn't he? <laughs> he's in the den. Come in, Marvin. Here I am, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hey, is that Marvin? Hi, Marvin. Hi, Leroy. Did you come over to see me? No, I came over to see your uncle. Yeah? <laughs> yeah sit down, boys. What's on your mind, Marvin? I came over to ask you a question, sir. Sir, get him. That's what I said, sir. Oh, brother. Leroy, if I were you, I wouldn't make any cracks about a fine, upstanding boy like Marvin. Yeah, boy. <laughs> sir, is it? Sir, is a mark of respect too often neglected by some members of the younger generation. But gosh, Marvin's too early with that stuff. Christmas is six weeks away. <laughs> Leroy, don't interrupt Marvin again. Continue, young man. Thank you, sir. What's your question? <clears throat> well, I think so much of your advice, I'd rather come to you than anybody else. He's my own father. You would? Shh, Leroy. Yes, Marvin? <laughs> The kids want me to go ice skating with them Saturday. I know my parents won't let me go. Should I say the heck with it and go anyway? Or should I obey my parents? Marvin, I'm glad you came to me. So am I. Obey your uncle. Yeah, I mean, your your parents. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll take your advice, sir. As usual, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Don't overdo it, Marvin. Hey, what's going on here? Well, Marvin simply came to me for some parental advice. And he's accepting it, like every boy should. Yeah. When some kids get as big as Leroy, they think they know everything. But they're just stupid. You hear me? Stupid, stupid. (laughs) You better watch out, Marvin. Well, you just better start appreciating your uncle. Like a lot of other people, you don't know how smart he is. Stupid. Marvin! Why are you stupid? I appreciate your loyalty, Marvin, but let's not let it run away with us. Am I letting it get away? (laughs) You better run along now, Marvin. I'm glad I was able to help. Before I go, 
Haven't you forgotten something? <laughs> I'll be in touch with you. Run along now. But how about the... Run along, Mom. But how about the... <laughs> Fine boy. There's something fishy here. What do you mean? Marvin's never run to you for advice. Well, you saw what happened. He must have had a reason. Leroy, let's not be suspicious. Um, excuse me, Marvin's waiting outside for his dollar. Zeke. He said, oh, oh, Leroy, I didn't know you were still here. Sorry, excuse me, come on. <laughs> What are you trying to prove, Unc? Trying to prove? Me? First you had Bertie building you up, then the deal with Mr. Peavy's, and now Marvin. You, well, my boy, I may as well admit, I've been concerned about you and Babs going to the dance in Dinky's car. Yeah? And I didn't want it to come to a showdown. Oh, uh, heck, we're not going, Unc. You're not? Babs told her mother she was going, and boy, did her mother tell her. She did. She put her foot down. She said, you're not going. You're going to bed at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Instead of beating around the bush, why don't you just say yes or no, Unc? You well. If you put your foot down, I wouldn't go against you. You've got such big feet. <laughs> you right, George. I don't know how I did it. But I got my authority back. <laughs> Lee will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Remember Kraft's Parquet Margarine when you go shopping tomorrow. Parquet is the delicious margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. And with every pound of Parquet you buy, you can order famous Powers Model nylon stockings at half price. Yes, only 75 cents a pair. Here's your chance to build a glamorous hosiery wardrobe at a wonderful saving. And your whole family will surely enjoy the appetizing flavor of the quality margarine made by Kraft, Parquet Margarine. Folks, this is Gildersleeve again. Are you doing all you can for your family, your community, and yourself? Uh, what I'm getting at is do you attend your church or synagogue regularly? Do you actively take part in religious affairs? Many of us don't realize how religion can enrich our daily lives. How it can strengthen us to meet our day-by-day -day problems. Personal problems, family problems, community problems, and national problems. Our nation was founded on faith in God. Freedom to worship is our heritage. But in other parts of the world, it's a right that's denied to millions. Take advantage of your precious freedom to worship. You'll benefit by it. See you in church. And I mean it. Good night, folks. Greg Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It's transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tepley, Mary Skip, Lillian Randolph, Barbara Whiting, Duffy Singer, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight. A big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added, if you like it zippy. Get both kinds of craft prepared mustard at your food store. Play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx tonight on the NBC Radio Network.